Hey, Ben Kaiser here from BenjiKaiser.com. Today, showing you how to dominate your field, talking about five tips for graphic designers using Photoshop or Illustrator. So I've been trending in the field of graphic design for over a decade now, and it, it's insane to realize it's been that long. Um, but here's a few quick tips and hacks when using Photoshop and Illustrator that I have found extremely helpful in order to keep my workflow and process to high efficiency. Number one, creating shapes. Now, when it comes to this rule about where you wanna create shapes, I see graphic designers messing this up. I see them using Photoshop rather than Illustrator to create their shapes for logos, banners, etc. Now the biggest reason this is a bad idea is because Photoshop is a raster based, what is pixel based program, whereas Illustrator, which is the one you want to be using, is a vector based program. So scalability is huge when it comes to using and creating objects. Then we're gonna switch over to my screen here and I'm gonna show you what I'm talking about and the reason it is important to use Illustrator rather than Photoshop. All right, so as you see over here in Photoshop, you see this jagged line. This is because Photoshop is a pixel-based program or raster-based program for technical terms. All right, now we switch over to Illustrator and you look at the smoothness of this line here on the ellipse. It is extremely smooth, which means our scalability will be absolutely incredible. So we can take an object all the way down this small and it's gonna zoom in on that and it, it looks great. And then you're gonna come up full scale and you scale up and even then you come in and zoom in and the line is still absolutely perfect. So that is the key to using Photoshop versus Illustrator for creating shapes. All right, number two is designing business cards or really any sort of layout that you'll be creating. People I see using Photoshop and Illustrator are making a grave mistake because you're losing all of the power of what's called Adobe InDesign. Adobe InDesign is fantastic because you can edit text, paragraphs, uh, alignments, create grids, everything you need to do to make sure that you line up your business card or document with great accuracy. And the thing is, when it comes to graphic design in this day and age, with desktop publishing becoming so easy for kind of the average layman, having the ability to be an expert in the details and being an expert with creativity and ingenuity is gonna be the key to success as a graphic designer. So if you're setting up a document and it's kind of haphazard and things aren't lined up well, you need to be using InDesign in order to lay out business cards, uh, brochures, letterheads, all the things that will carry the designs, the photos, um, the different illustrations that you're creating. Pull those into InDesign. All right, number three is where you're gonna be using the type tool. Again, I see a lot of people using Photoshop to create their type. And this is fine if you're gonna have small documents or maybe even some web-based banners, but when you go to scale that or create a larger piece from that same design, scalability is not there. Remember, it is a pixel or raster-based program, so it is not scalable. So InDesign or Illustrator is gonna be the best bet for using text because it's scalable, and within InDesign, there is a myriad of options on how to customize the text, whether letting, tracking, line spacing, everything in there to make sure that you design with high efficiency. Now, there is times where you can use Photoshop in order to create spectacular movie posters or neon glowing signs that say words or even like magazine covers. You just really want this photo to pop and put some great effects on that text. That's fine if you're doing like headers or specific objects, but to create entire text blocks or even just paragraphs in Photoshop is just not a good idea. Number four, creating gradients or overlays. Now this is really cool because you can create a lot of good effects and we're gonna be using Photoshop for this one. The thing is, if you're an illustrator, you can't really get the customization that you can get within Photoshop. Photoshop is made to do photo editing, which is very helpful when creating overlays and gradients that I would never be able to do within a program like Illustrator. Now, speaking of effects, let's talk about shadowing. That's number five. Shadowing is something I use to get the effect of depth. I use this a lot in creating thumbnails or different banners on YouTube or ver with various clients. You're gonna get far greater customization within Photoshop. I've seen people do shadowing in Illustrator and it can be good, but it can be kind of finicky. In Photoshop, you can use the brush tool, which is highly effective for editing your shadows. You can work on smoothing, flow, and density of the brush in order to get the perfect shadow. 
I recommend going and looking at different people's designs and how they've done their shadowing and copying that shadowing to your design. This will help you to be able to create the most real life and accurate version of your shadowing. All right, as you see here, we're in Photoshop and I've added some shadowing to this block here. This is an InDesign logo. And what I'm doing is I'm creating it to make it look like I'm holding it in my hand. And um, this helps in order to create the effect when I'm over in this, I've created a, th a thumbnail for one of my videos, and it, it makes it look uh, the appearance that I'm holding it more than it just kind of sitting there. Um, and that's super helpful in order to get the feel of it, because if you look, if I don't have that shadowing, it just kind of looks pasted on top. But with the shadowing, it makes the, my hand look like I'm coming around it a little bit more, and that's really helpful. So this is some techniques I'm working on myself in order to create better shadows. Um, and that's one thing I recommend definitely doing in Photoshop. Well, there's the five tips for graphic designers using Photoshop and Illustrator. If you want to join the subscribers dominating their field, hit the subscribe button. Also, if this video has helped you at all, please hit the like button. And add some comments below if you have any questions about Photoshop, Illustrator, or InDesign, and the things that you want to learn. We are definitely willing to answer here. Thanks for tuning in. Benji Kaiser, and we'll see you on the next episode.